Hello and welcome to an exciting announcement from Texas Tech Athletics. I'm Robert Giovanetti alongside of Rodney Allison, the Executive Director of the Double T Varsity Club. And Rodney, a great former quarterback here at Texas Tech. Always good to be with you, Rodney, and it's an exciting time, right? You're, you're, you've got a great class to announce this year. And, and what makes this even more special, right? It's voted on by their peers. It is, and we go through a process, Gio, where our former players and coaches trainers and managers go through a nomination class. They send them to us. Uh, then we put the ballot together. Uh, we send it out, and the actual players, coaches, uh, vote on each Hall of Fame class. It's, it's all kept within our family. So let's start with this year's 2018 class. And we've got a guy a lot of people know locally, Ed Mooney. Ed Mooney. Ed Mooney's a unique guy. He was a two-sport guy back in the 60s, played football for J.T. King, was an all-conference uh, linebacker in 1967. Uh, and there was a quote back in the day, as far as his track was concerned, that he basically put Texas Tech track on the map, uh, according to his coach back then. But he went on to get drafted in the fourth round, played five or six years in the NFL, and, and he's a great, just a great addition to this class. You know, it's funny, when we were looking at it Ed's background, and you don't see this much anymore in athletics, but he really excelled in a couple, right? So that's what makes him really interesting. And, and it doesn't happen very much. It did back then, but but probably since I've been here, we've not put a uh, uh, an athlete into the Hall of Fame that was a two-sport guy as much as probably Ed Mooney was known for, for both of the sports that he played. All right, so congratulations Good. to Ed Mooney. Our next member, we had a lot of talk lately about Texas Tech baseball, but a guy that played during the 80s, Jimmy Zachary. Yeah, Jimmy Zachary was a, probably the guy that's that's the last of that uh, Gary Ashby, Johnny Grimes, that list of former great baseball players that played for for Cal Seegers. But the unique thing about Jimmy, and a lot of people don't remember, he was a three-time first-team All Southwest Conference player back in the early '80s, and you know just a just a great bat, great third baseman, just a just an all-around great player and an All-American. Yeah, and a lot of guys tell me from that from that era. Uh, Ashby, Dale Redmond, those guys, they always talk about, man, that guy could really swing the bat. Yeah, he, he was back in that era, and, you know, sometimes we forget about some of those guys, and he was part of that class that are part of this class uh, from way back then that, that really deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. All right, so Jimmy Zachary, the second member of this year's class. Third member will go to Texas Tech basketball back in the 1980s during the Gerald Myers heyday, a guy really heavily recruited out of Houston, Sean Gay. Yeah, Sean uh, is a highly decorated for people that remember him. And, you know, he's one of those guys that was uh, freshman newcomer of the year his first year here. His second year, second team All-Southwest Conference. His next year, second team All-Southwest Conference. His senior year, first team All-Conference. So as he played, he got better and better and was recognized every single year. Plus, on top of that, I think he, uh, I know he was a three-time all-defensive player in the Southwest Conference, so over, overall great player. Great jumper, great leaper. I remember one year uh, Coach Myers had pro, you know, prevented his team, said he couldn't dunk because they'd missed some dunks that cost him a couple games, and then they're in the Southwest Conference Tournament. Sean Gay makes a steal at the end, and he dunks, and Gerald's excited yeah. because uh, you know, he thought, okay, that's the guy that could do it. But he, he had great feet, great hands, uh, fantastic basketball Could player. do it all. And, you know, one of the fun things I get to do, I get to call these guys and tell them they're in the Texas Tech Athletic Hall of Fame, and that's one call that I will always remember because of how excited he was to be in this class. Congratulations to Sean Gay. Next member was elected last year, couldn't induct him because he's playing overseas, another great hoopster, Andre Emmett. Yeah, he, he possibly could be in the conversation for one of your top three or four, five players in the history of the school. Still, I think, the uh, leading scorer of the history of Texas Tech basketball, three-time first team, all Big 12, consensus All-American, maybe your most highly decorated uh, uh, basketball player in the history of the school. You want to talk about a go-to guy in basketball. When Texas Tech needed a basket, this was in the Bob Knight era, Andre could get it for you. He could get it, and he ended up, I think he was a second-round pick uh, of the Seattle, but he ended up playing a year or two in the NBA, but he has had a phenomenal career overseas, 13 or 14 years. Now he's come back. To the United States and is playing in that big three league and they say he's a dynamic player in that league and 
pretty much is, is dominates. Yeah, I watched a game the other night where he just took over, took over in the second half, and I thought, yeah, that's DeAndre. That's Hunter. interesting to watch. Yeah. You've never seen <laughs> it. It is. Uh, but we recognize that guy. I said, yeah, he can still <laughs> score anytime he puts the ball in his hands. So Andre Emmett, the next member of the class. And we finish up with a former Lady Raider basketball player, and now she's back, Aaron Grant. Yeah, she's another one of those that's highly decorated and uh, a newcomer, the freshman of the year in the conference, uh, first team all-conference, uh, Big 12 a couple of times, took her team to an Elite Eight, two Sweet Sixteenths, uh, went on to become uh, the 39th pick in the WNBA draft and played several years, but thrilled to have Aaron going in. And a quick story, I got a chance to call Aaron to tell her that she was going in. And after she, we talked and she was excited about going in, she said, by the way, Rodney, I just took a job last night with Texas Tech basketball, women's basketball. So thrilled to have Aaron back and thrilled to have Aaron as a part of this Hall of Fame class. And, you know, coaching on this team, she looks like she could still play. Oh, exactly. And, and boy, she can really help this team as far as, hey, how to run the point and how to, how to run an offense. Aaron Grant had all the skills. Yeah, she did. And she's also an academic All-American as well. So she was the whole package. So that is the 2018 Texas Tech Hall of Fame class. Rodney, this just didn't end it, right? So tell us, November 2nd, we'll have the dinner, and what goes on that weekend? Well, we do, we'll, have a, we'll have a Hall of Fame banquet on November 2nd, Friday night, November 2nd, the night before we play Oklahoma. It'll be at the Center Point Convention Center uh, here in Lubbock, right off the Marsha Sharp there. And we'll get information out to the public in the very near future. It will be open to the public. We'd love to see you come out and support this Hall of Fame class. And then we will also recognize them on the field during the Oklahoma game the next day. Usually we do that right before the game, but some some point in time they'll be recognized and we'll have a big tailgate for them on that Saturday and help them celebra uh, celebrate being put into the Hall of Fame. Rodney, one of the best things Texas Tech did was bring you back Thank to you. run the Double T Varsity Club. Looking forward to November 2nd. Hope you're all there. Congratulations to this year's inductees to 2018 Hall of Fame class.